Sure. Good to go. All right. So let me share my screen. <clears throat> All right. So can you see the studio here? Cool. Yep. All right. So uh, this demo is basically just two pages. And before we dive into what it looks like in the studio, let me go show you uh, what it looks like in practice. So um, this is the extension exported over here. And you can type something in like, I'll type the word visual in over here and click the button. And it basically what it does is it goes and parses the entire page and finds all references of the word visual. And then the way I have this action set right now is it returns the inner HTML of anything that it finds. So it's gonna return this value. You can see it here. Um, and if we just like scroll down, you can see the next one here corresponds to this one over here and so forth. So basically what that action does is it scrapes the page, finds all references and returns them as a JSON array, which then in this case, I've set them into a grid for display purposes. Um, you can go quite a bit further with this. Like you can use some other Chrome extension actions to uh, automatically highlight those on the page or even like scroll to them on the page. So you can make it more interactive. Uh, but the main question was about like, how do I even get the data out of the page in the first place? So that's what I did in this one. Um, so if we go back into the studio real quick, we can take a look at how it's set up. Um, so we have these two pages, uh, the grid row page and the main page. The main page only has three elements, an input, a button that runs the actions, and then the grid list that displays the results. And in the grid list, I've only... Uh, messed with two properties at all. I just selected the row page and then I removed the diff key um, because by default, the diff key is gonna be ID, which means that each row, the, the grid is gonna be looking for an ID to say those are the same row and merge them together. And I don't want any merging happening here. So I just remove the diff key completely. So that way it just never tries to like merge anything together. Um, and then on the row, it's a really simple one, just outer, uh, divs and then this item name. And the only thing I have set up on this element here is to come from a variable called inner HTML for the data. And I'll show you why that is in just a moment. Um, but basically at the like the generic level or the, the general level, uh, the reason for that is that I told it to return the inner HTML of each element it finds on the page in that array. And so it's going to create the grid rows. And then I use that for the display in here. Um, all right, so let's go through here and take a look at what happens. So I type the value in here and then the user clicks on get elements. If I look over at the events on click, I run this flow called get elements from page. So this is where I'm using that Chrome extension page scraper action. Um, this only has like five inputs here. It's not very, it's not like a super complex one. Um, so the general search value, this is the value that I want to search for. Like, what, what am I looking for on the page? By default, this is going to come as just a text input. So you could just like type something manually in here. You could type a static value if you want it to always search for that thing. But the way that I set it up was to come from that text input. So that way the user can type something in, click the button. It's going to take that value and search the page. And then what I'm wanting it to return, these are the attributes from the nodes that it finds. Tell me what you want to return. So if I go back and look, if we inspect this, I'm gonna right click on the element and inspect it here. If I look in here, this text that's kind of inside of these brackets here, like where it's got the H1 tag and then it closes the H1 tag, this one has an H3 on the inside and the outside, H3, H3, and hopefully it's, it's probably pretty small, I just realized. Um, this inside thing right here is called the inner HTML. So that's why inner HTML is going to pull that value out of it. You can kind of think of inner HTML as like the value of most HTML nodes. I mean, it's not technically always, but um, that's kind of how it can be viewed. So this is by default in there. So when you first come in, it's just gonna have inner HTML in there if you add this to a flow. So you won't have to change anything. Um, and then this, where to search, uh, body only, or you can switch to search whole page. It will default to body only. And if we go back over to here, we can see why that is. 
um, body is really the whole page, but like the whole displayed page, I guess. But the entire page includes the HTML head here, which if you toggle that to whole page, it'll search all this as well. And it'll actually return these things out of it. So if you wanted to find things inside of like script tags and return those tags or whatever, you return the contents of those tags, you can use this to do that. But really like the 80 or 90% use case for this action is typically searching the body only, finding the inner HTML and returning that as a JSON array is what this action is going to output. Uh, by default, the variable name that's going to return that response is search results. Um, so I just left that alone. So what's going to happen is it searches the page for this value. It returns the inner HTML of each thing it finds. It only searches the body and it creates a JSON array and sets that into a variable called search results. And then once it's done all that, it will run a flow afterward. And in this case, I have this flow called set results into grid where I'm using a set value action. I'm setting the grid list element, which is this element here on the page. And the value I'm setting into it is that search results variable that was created by the previous action. So that's what makes it to where, if I close this up, I type like uh, maybe build and go get elements. It'll return all the nodes that are built. So basically it scrapes the page, returns a JSON array as a, um, with the inner HTML of each node that it finds. I take that whole array and set it into the grid. And then each inner HTML value is as a variable inside of each one of those rows that it creates. And then by binding the data for each of these, uh, for the text element to that inner HTML variable, it then displays the value here. So that's pretty much it. That's the generic uh, scrape action. It's really, we, we used to have like one action that had like every option in it. This generic one is really meant for this type of simple page scraping where you're just getting elements, returning them, you want to display them or interact with them in some way. So I hope that covers what Dominic was looking for there. We can go into a lot more in depth about like how to do more complex searching and filter things and search more in depth, I guess, inside of the HTML. Um, and also we can go into like how to use that information, but probably good for another like a different video <laughs> for those different things. So yeah, I think this yeah. is great. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mark.